Morning guys, it is Tuesday morning. I am here at work. I'm in the back of the shop where I do my thing most of the time. Uh, just kind of getting the day going. Um, on my way in, I started thinking about um, the way we as humans love to compartmentalize things. Um, we like to have boxes and packages with labels on them um, telling us that this this goes here and this goes here and, and we need to keep them separated. In fact, a good example is my wife doesn't like for her food to touch on her plate. And um, my brother-in-law and his wife for Christmas one year bought her a uh, plate like you used to have in the cafeteria when you were a kid that had the place for the pizza and the corn and the applesauce. You know, it was all separated, segmented. But that's the way we like to do things. And, and to some degree, things need to be compartmentalized. I mean, you don't want, like for instance, um, around the corner here in this shop area um, is all the tools and hardware and stuff. And you don't want to get these screws mixed up with these screws and these nuts to get mixed up with these nuts. And, you know, so there's, there's a place for compartmentalizing. But when it comes to us as people, that's a different story. We are whole beings. Um, we aren't just spiritual. We aren't just physical. We aren't just emotional. We are all. We are the sum of those parts. Um, but our society today, in particular, tries to tell us that those parts are separate. They are not related to each other. And um, if you feel a certain way um, that is different than the other two pieces of the part of the of the sum total, um, then it's okay to follow that and do that, um, disregarding the other two parts of the puzzle. And um, what you end up there with at that particular point is is someone living in complete confusion um, because you've, you've got a dichotomy going on or a trichotomy if you allow me to say such a thing um, with the three parts if one is out of sync with the other two then there's going to be some issues coming up um, you know for instance if a person is emotionally distressed um, it'll throw your health out of whack and if you're a spiritual person, it'll throw your spirituality out of work. Well, now, you've got a spiritual side whether you want to admit it or not. And it doesn't mean you go to church or have to go to church or anything like that. But there is a spiritual aspect to every single human being whether they want to admit it or not. But if you're emotionally unkempt, um, the other two will, will suffer to some degree as a result. And vice versa. Um, you know, you've got people in the hospital who are very ill and they'll go one way or the other spiritually they'll either glom onto God and hold on to him with white knuckles or they push him away completely and say you know I don't want anything to do with you if you're allowing this to happen to me then you must not be a loving God and then you've got a person who's out of kilter spiritually and they start looking for means to save themselves physically um, or um, they feel like they can get themselves together emotionally, and and if they can if they can get that on track, then you know they don't have to deal with the deeper issues that are involved in spirituality. So, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm rambling. I, I, this was just something that was weighing on me this morning on my way in, just noticing people, watching people, listening to people, um, having been in a, a little bit of a pastoral role um, for several years now, off and on. You know, I've had the opportunity to sit down and talk to people, and I see that if there's a struggle going on in one area of their triune being, the other two are going to feel the impact. Um, and like I said, we live in a society that feels like that, you know what, you can put your spirituality over here in this box. Don't let it touch the green beans. You know what I'm saying? Or you can take your emotional part of your being and put it in a box and put it over here and say, okay... Keep this over here. It must not touch the mashed potatoes. 
and their physical being is put in a box and is placed over here. And they're, you know, for God's sake, don't let your physical being touch the beats. And you, you can't do that. Because there's a membrane that connects all three. And it bonds them. And, and so you're going to end up doing even more damage. And you may not even know it. You may not even know it. Because you don't think that they're connected. But then you start finding yourself struggling in one or two of the other areas that are out of kilter as a result of the one being out of kilter. And that's what we end up dealing with. And that's why there's so much spiritual confusion, particularly here in the West. That's why there's so much confusion concerning our physical well-being. Because there's a confusion on the spiritual and the emotional. And there's so much emotional junk going on that it impacts our spirituality if we, in fact, you know have any spirituality that we confess to have. So it's just something to think about. It's a little deeper this morning perhaps than usual. I haven't said the name Jesus yet, but I will. Jesus Jesus is concerned with those three aspects of our being. He addressed those three aspects of our being. When Jesus was here, he touched people in those three aspects of their being. You know, the, the night that Nicodemus came to him, um, Jesus Jesus uh, related his emotional state by revealing to him that look I know why you're here I know why you're you know why you came to me in the middle of the night because you don't want everybody else to know that you're consulting with this young itinerant preacher from a hill town um, I know that you're looking for something deeper spiritually that's why you came to see this young preacher from a hill town and physically speaking, um, you know, there's emotion and there's phys physicality and there's spirituality and they're all connected. And that's why Jesus, Jesus used the term born again, which in Nicodemus's mind was a physical act. How, can, how is it possible for a man to enter his mother's womb a second time? Um, but Jesus touched on all that. And then there's the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000, where, where Jesus addressed the physical needs of those people, having reach them spiritually and emotionally because spirituality and emotional uh, are particularly strong bonds to each other that's why people get upset when you start talking about their spirituality or their religion and you disagree or you put it down because there's an emotional connection to that even more than to our physical being um, so anyway um, yes Jesus cares about all three aspects of who we are um, and we were made that way. We were intended to be that way. You know, it's not a it's not a coincidence that we are made in the image of God, and God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. Hope the sound was okay. My sound lately, I've been told, has not been very good, um, particularly when I'm in the car. So I'm going to try and maybe not do those in the car anymore. At any rate, um, you guys, you have a great day, and I will talk to you again soon. Let's pray. Father, help us to realize that we are one being with three parts, and that every part is just as vital as uh, the other two. Help us to understand that there is a um, strong connection between the three parts, and that if one is neglected, the other two also will be... Uh, um, will be in empathy with the with the injured part or the part that's out of sync. Father, I pray that you will give us wisdom, give us guidance, be with us throughout this day, be with our family and our friends, particularly our children, if we, those of us who have children. Thank you for loving us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, again, have a great day, and I will talk to you later.